Welcome back. Amid a shift in Western thinking over the need to accelerate supplies to Ukraine, and as Russia's convention conventional military suffers big losses. Putin has hinted at the possible use of tactical nuclear weapons and just recently suspended Russia's participation in the last remaining nuclear arms control agreement with the U.S. To break down the significance of all this, let's turn back to the panel. Eric, I'll begin with you. Over the last few weeks, we've seen varying commitments from Western allies to supply tanks and long-range missiles, the Leopard 2s, the M1 Abrams. But this past week, President Biden was in Kyiv and he made a commitment to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes. What does that now mean for Ukraine to win this war? Well, the, uh, the Ukrainians desperately need the support of the West uh, to get the, the kind of victory you had, for instance, uh, the Americans at Yorktown when they kicked out the British or uh, the uh, Vietnamese who won over the French in the Amien Phu in the 1950s. You need this kind of very deep psychological shock where the Russians will stop. That doesn't mean they won't stop for the long term, but at least uh, for the short term. To be able to do that, they need significant uh, support for, uh, from the West uh, with much better weapons and uh, all the, the support that's behind all the, the network work that talking to each other. When Biden talked about the fact that he would not allow Ukraine to become a victory for Russia, he didn't say that he's looking for Ukraine to win. We need to define what win is. Mm. And this is where I would differ respectfully with some of my colleagues. It's not just territory. If Ukraine is able to get back at least the territory that it lost after the invasion that occurred on the 24th of February last year, then it might be able to negotiate provided, provided that they are given NATO membership. Because NATO membership would mean a guarantee, a meaningful guarantee. This is where President Biden talks about the fact that the West will defend every single inch. Mm -hmm. That would allow Ukraine to negotiate some kind of territorial compromise. Without that, there's not much point in talking about territory because then any concession could then be reversed by Russia. Ukraine has earned the right to be in NATO. I think that is crucial. So whether we talk about weapons, whether we talk about the contours of a victory, we also have to bring in NATO membership. Phil, up until now, we've been reluctant to provide Ukraine with air support. I mean, we just agreed to, and by we, I mean Western allies just agreed to supply them with tanks. So, I mean, what is it that Ukraine needs to turn the tide here? And I would agree with Oral that NATO membership is an absolute must, though I don't know how close Western allies are to, to getting there. Right, and the answer to that second part first, um, NATO membership would be a heavy lift if Crimea was not back under um, Ukrainian control, uh, because then there would always be the possibility of a future war over Crimea again. And this is something I think the majority of the, or at least a number of the NATO states would be hesitant about in extending uh, Ukraine uh, NATO membership. I agree that NATO in the end of this should be a part of NATO so that this does not happen again, but even more reason to give it the resources that it needs to retake back its territory, including Crimea. The resources that are needed, the first part of the question, as, as the, my colleague just said, they need more of everything. Ammunition is, is key, uh, but so are the delivery systems, the longer range delivery systems that can reach further into Russia. A large part of the territory that Russia has, um, has captured from Ukraine is right now still beyond the reach of Ukrainian forces. If you can go out further, you will really destroy their capacity to supply their, their troops with the ammunition, even bring up the, the uh, personnel reserves uh, onto the front line. Marissa, look, uh, if you're going to talk about winning this war for, by Ukraine, you're going to talk about Ukraine liberated all of its territory, which it should, and I agree with my colleagues who stated so, they will need to be provided with the adequate amount of uh, modern uh, Western uh, offensive weapons, such as main battle tanks in sufficient quantities, long-range artil artillery, such as ATAGAM system that fired at 300 kilometers and reach Crimea, such as the multi-role uh, fire jet uh, uh, jets, such as F-16. Uh, most of this have not been provided enough uh, in enough uh, in sufficient quantities, and they should be provided. And I believe if they are provided, Ukraine are capable of ending this war and victory, retaking on its territory and bringing peace to Europe. 
Ron, Putin has throughout the war rattled his nuclear saber. Is this something that you're concerned about? Yes, because I think Putin understands that if this war ends with his defeat, that means his uh, even physical end of Putin. And uh, I think that uh, he might use under certain and extreme circumstances of defeat, he might use tactical nuclear weapon somewhere, maybe in an open area, and there are huge open areas in, in Ukraine, he might use it a, as a, a red card to the West, I'm serious. I think that discussing this and speculating about this is a huge mistake on the part of West and Western analysts, because we play right to Putin's game. He wants to use nuclear blackmail, he tried it uh, in the case of Sweden and Finland, deciding to join NATO. He keeps rattling this, but we have to understand that Vladimir Putin is a corrupt leader, a kleptocrat, not a suicidal theocrat. If we look at what nuclear deterrence is, it is very clear that this would be a suicidal move. He's not going to do it. He can find ways of trying to survive. He can find his own off-ramp. But every time we keep speculating about this, and this is not to say we should not take a nuclear threat seriously, but we have built the capacity to, to deter nuclear weapons. We did this during the Cold War. We were able to deter the Soviet Union, which was a superpower. Russia is but a wretched remnant of that superpower. But I think part of the reason we're speculating is because that's what's holding Western powers back from giving Ukraine exactly what it, is, it needs. But the more we speculate, the more we are deterred. And this is one of the problems. All right, hold that thought. We'll be right back.